Hello everyone, my name is Relax and Panic, and this is another reaction to Hunter x Hunter. It's episode 2, and you know what to do. As always, if you want to see the reaction itself, just go down into my descriptions, follow the links, replace the circumflex.partsourcereal.dots, and enjoy. Once you've done, feel free to come back here and hear out my thoughts about this episode. So, see you soon. For those that came back, welcome back! Now, let's talk. Um... Nice episode, second episode, still testing. So, um, they are not at the exam yet. They are still being tested multiple times before arriving, which, as I already mentioned, makes total sense. And the captain explained it the last time. There are so many competitors for the exam, so many people who want to be part of the exam in the end, that they just have to go through them before it and have to test them and um i mean if you if you look what the captain did he had on board like uh, let's say multiple dozens maybe close to 100 people who wanted to join in and only three of them those three here made it through it so he already takes out like i would say 90 percent roundabout um so only 10 percent ever reach the uh, the harbor where all of this starts and then you have another test who will go in onto the boss who is just following orders in this case that's a clever that's a pretty mean uh, part of the testing um so you take those out who just follow the lines who don't look outside the boundaries those who are interested in going their own ways um maybe getting friends you know the captain was the friend that gave him the tip um or just look for other options other ways those will be the only ones able to reach the exam in the end um maybe from those in the bus some made another way but it sounded very much like most of them didn't so that makes sense again if you want to be a hunter you have to be able to walk outside alone by yourself not fall back onto the things that civilization has to offer so um it's partially okay but i would clearly fail you know i would be one of those yeah just sit in the bus it's cool and it's over <laughs> not that i would have ever arrived the ship would have been too much for me i guess um and then you have this test with the old lady now that was Ooh, that was a mean one. Um, I mean, there's there's a lot in this test, um, apart from what they did set up as kind of a trap, you know? Um, I mean, it's no question that the, the first guy who went through it um, <clears throat> did not deserve to finish the exam. He was just a mean person. He was someone who possibly doesn't care much about people. So um, his answer made it pretty clear saying uh, I chose the mother because you're born with it and you cannot get another one that makes sense true um, but his second part of the answer is so mean and so bad spirited you know this it's just a lover I can get another lover you know like that another so it doesn't appreciate at all um, a person who should be close to you so yeah he failed with good reasons there um, however Setting up a question like that, and Gorn later on said it very clearly, is a problem that may encounter you. Um, there are tests of life like this. Um, I mean, that's a pretty harsh one, and um, life would be kind of a dick if it would throw a test like that your way. But it may happen. And I think it is a foreshadowing here, what we heard. Because Gorn questioned himself, Sadly for me, because I wanted to discuss it, um, that there might be a decision like that in the future ahead. So there might be the moment, maybe in the exam, just saying, um, or later on, we will see, where Gorn has to choose between two people he likes very much. And I mean, right now, we do have three people here. So just take this picture. Who would he choose? And why? For what reasons? Um... If there's a, a moment when both are in lethal danger and you know you can only save one. That's that's the main problem here um, of this question. They went with 
you pass if you do not answer. But it is because they just, you know, they just made it a question. They did not make it a real scenario. But in a real scenario, um, both of them, um, mother and lover, um, brother and sister, two best friends, whatever you want to take, are not just in danger, but you have to choose um, because both are about to die. And in this moment, if you do not act, then choosing is acting. Both will die. That's the main problem. It's not about who choose you have all the time you want and if you don't choose well we are stuck no it is about if you do not choose both die you know both are standing on a bridge that is collapsing right now you can grab one and if you do not grab anyone because you do not choose both are dead that's the main problem here and um i would say normally you act out of instinct and your instincts um choose for you and there might be something deeper why you chose one person or the other which you can reflect later um i can kind of hope that if we come to a situation like that in the future that gone will make it based on um knowledge you know if there's like a situation where those bows here are in danger that he will be like i know those two i know who of th of these two um can do what what his abilities are his uh and who has better chances to do it himself you know like um as example <clears throat> oh yeah let's take the collapsing bridge as example and let's say it's um leorio who has to choose in such a situation bridge is collapsing leorio has to choose who to pull out from the collapsing bridge he should just a scenario he should take kurapika because Gon has the ability, as we have just seen, while falling, to still rescue himself. Which we do not know from Karepika yet. He has nunchucks, so possibly not. So that would be one option by logic. So enough about that, sorry, I'm, I was about mumbling here. Um, it's however still a very mean question. So, harsh test and... Um, I think it is not generally about um, not choosing. I think it is more about determining what kind of a person you are. So even if you would take um, an answer, one or two, if you would explain with heart and empathy and um, with regret, you know, if, if the uh, old lady would have felt that this is a decision you're nagging about, you, you really hate on doing that you are having a hard time, I think she would have still let you pass if she realizes you're a good human being. And that's what the test is about. Are you a good human being? So we have, are you physically able to withstand the storms on the sea? Okay, are you fit physically for traveling? And uh, number two, are you willing mentally to go your own ways instead of taking the easy way, the boss? Are you empathic are you a good human being that's the next one and in the last test the fourth one which we had with the i wrote them down itiko um with these shapeshifters it's more neither all of it which was tested so the person in specific was tested by well, the first three tests were for the general broad people all of them this was a specific test for each and every one of them and they all showed why they would be good hunters so that that's a nice one um it was pretty clear for me when they jumped in uh, at the building and there was one kitiko attacking uh the two married persons a couple which we now know are brother and sister and the children of those two kitikos um i mean it was I was like, okay, this is another test. It has to be. It uh, really makes no sense that um, they build up an exam site there um, and just get run over. There have to be like, either there are those who take the exam and they should be pretty skillful and good fighters, I guess. So they wouldn't be run over by um, some critters. Um, then you had the the signs in the in the forest before that already, which was like, 
okay, they are warning of magical beast. We haven't seen none, any any of them yet, and now they are in the building. And um, it was such a typical princess rescue thing, you know. The wife is being abducted by a manically laughing um, dragon, or in this case, a kitiko. Um, the the other one is hurt on the ground. You have to split the party. Who will care about the injured one? Who will follow the beast and rescue the princess? It was a typical setup in my opinion. So I was like, okay, that's a setup. <clears throat> and it was. However, there were some surprises in and those are the ones that are interesting. So um, we have Leorio staying with the injured one and treating him. I did not expect that. Um, I mean, he is a loud mouse so far. Um, and I don't mean it negative here. Yeah, I like him. He's a cool guy. He's a nice dude. But he, he acts as a loudmouth. So he seems to have some insecurities in him. And he tries to blend over by being loud. Um, but he has medical equipment at hand instantly. And as it is pointed out later on. He was faster than any doctor in treating the wounded one. Which is surprising. Which is not what I expected. And he showed a lot of empathy, which I kind of guessed already. So he is, um, he has a soft spot. He has a soft heart and he uh, possibly had some problems due to that in the past and now tries to act fresh and mean from time to time to not show that he's easily hurt, I guess. So he's a, he's a cool dude. I like him. Um, then uh, Grapika, a lot of knowledge you know insights um wisdom a lot of intellect so he realized the tattoo and uh, the girl instantly realized that she uh, that he saw it. she tried to cover it with her hand at the wrist um he i'm not sure about his reasons to hit leorio um maybe he saw through it but he said he did not see through it, but he just punished him for leaving the injured one. So at least he has a very strong feeling of what is right. Um, and that's why he passed. So he kind of saw through the disguise there, at least partially. Um, in the case of the girl, something is wrong. You cannot be the girl. Um, he questioned her. He said, so who are you? So he saw through the test. Could have been a trap, you know. Um, very well done. But gone is the number one question for me. So there are multiple things here and it's pointed out and in the end um, it was said by uh, the Itiko in the end and Rapika mentioned it during the chase. Superhuman abilities. He can see in the dark. He could distinguish between, distinguish between the two Kitikos who said that they were not extinguished extingu Distinguished, not extinguished, distinguished since years or decades even. So he has very strange abilities, very incredibly powerful abilities. He realized that they were being followed since the harbor by this one guy, which no one else realized. He, um, in the empty town, he realized there are people around when the others did not realize. So. He has an incredibly heightened awareness, incredibly good senses. He is bodily supernatural. I mean, he's jumping between trees like nothing. Um, he reacting, he, he reacted to falling down a cliff instantly. Um, normally, you get fear or anything, and mentally, he is strong as well. That's the thing. So, what is he? I mean, we know that from his father's side, he has the abilities to become a hunter. And it seems, I guess, that his father is something special. People do remember him and like him. So, um, seeing that there are things like the Kitika, uh, Kitiko who can transform into human beings um, with very unique abilities, I ask myself if Gorn is a normal human or if he is somehow uh, special and if so, why? What makes him so strong, so fast, so aware, so nimble? That's an interesting question I have in the back of my mind from now on. So I will look out if there may be answers in the future. However, it was a very nice episode. Uh, next time they, they will be possibly in the exam. They are being transported there right now. Um, 
and I will keep an open eye, as I said. I hope you liked that one. It was a good, good episode. Really enjoyed it. And I will see you the next time. Until then, feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. My name is Relax and Panic. Goodbye and out.